Thanks for joining us today at City Life. We believe today's message will empower you and point you towards Jesus. But remember that church is so much more than a message you listen to. It's a living, breathing community that we invite you to be a part of. We hope to see you on a Sunday morning at City Life, in person or online. We had some fun stuff going on church. It is Relay Sunday. And if you have never been here for Relay Sunday, you are in for a treat. I want to invite to the platform Dr. Brett Baines. Come on up. Where is Jazz? Mandy, come on up. This whole crew, this is part of our CLY team. So CLY, you're going to cheer loud and strong for them. Well, thank you, everyone. Uh, my name is Bretton Baines, and uh, my wife and I have been attending here for about 15 years. I grew up in Wetaskiwin with the likes of Jeremy Blackwood, Ben Darwin, Kendra Bigelow, uh, the Canole Boys. So uh, great always to see a lot of uh, friendly faces when I come to church to remind me of home. Uh, today we're talking about fake news. Um, our, our topic today is be true to yourself. That's what the world tells us. And uh, Jesus tells us, you know, we should deny ourselves. So I just want to speak to that a little bit. I hear that, uh, so be true to yourself. I hear that message from the world and it makes me cringe. I don't know any of you have had the displeasure of living that motto out. Um, but I can say from experience that the ending of that story has a very disappointing end. Um, so as I begin thinking and praying about what I was going to say today uh, about this fake news headline, at first I thought, Maybe I could uh, think of a story, you know, maybe where I was true to myself and it, uh, you know, it ended really badly. And then I thought, yeah, but it is church, so I got to think of a story that isn't that bad, right? Um, and so I just started to begin just thinking over, um, and, and I began to realize I, I had two categories of memories. So I had memories, type one memories that were filled with life, and unfortunately, I had a second memory bank that was filled with memories that aren't. I have memories filled with love and joy and peace through even hardships, memories where I trusted God with my future, my finances, my friendships, even my business, memories where the pain of discipline had led to later treasures. Then I had this second group of memories where I was true to myself. Unfortunately, not all the parts of me are all that true. I have parts of me that are reckless, selfish, and as Monica talked about last week, I've got a bad case of FOMO. Um, you can ask my wife about that. She'd be happy to tell you all about my affliction. Um, so after these initial thoughts, um, it was time to hit the good book and do some research, see what God had to say about this message. So right away, three verses jumped right out immediately. Um, Matthew chapter 16, 24 and 25. Then Jesus said to his disciples, if any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way, take up your cross and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. Secondly, Mark 8, 34 and 35. Then calling the crowd to his disciples, he said, If any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way. Take up your cross and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But you will, if you give up your life for my sake and for the sake of the good news, you will save it. Lastly, Luke chapter 9, 23 and 24. Then he said to the crowd, If any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way. Take up the cross daily and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. So recently, obviously, we've been going through um, a section of Sundays where we learned how to read the Bible together. I thought that was really helpful. Uh, one of the things they talked about in the, is, a, is repetition. It's a tool the Bible uses to really highlight important topics. Well, here we have the same verse verbatim by three different authors and top it all off. It's all red letter verses, which means these are direct words from Jesus, really highlighting even more their importance. When I was younger, I read these verses and I had the mindset that I would have to give up my way or my life now for a gain in the future, 
which was everlasting life with my Savior, Jesus Christ. So I'd have to live this sad existence of not being able to do what I want, when I want, with whoever I want. And the caveat at the end was I would get to live eternal life in heaven. As I look back at my memories of the times I was being true to myself and following my own path, those memories of my life feel dead and fruitless. Um, they are filled with regret and missed opportunity. Contrastingly, I look back at the majority of my life that I've spent following Jesus' path, and I see an overwhelming harvest and bountiful fruit. Even through difficult memories of miscarriage or losing loved ones, I immediately think of Monica braving the smell of our house after four days of not showering because I just felt dead inside. But there she was supporting us and bringing us a comforting word. I think of the church unable to hold enough people at my dad's funeral because he chose to deny himself and take up Christ's cross and the impact that it had on so many people's lives. So while our gift of eternal life is a great reward, I believe that denying yourself and following Jesus gives you life immediately. A life you can look back on with joy and pride, a feeling of thankfulness, that there are no wasted moments, knowing that the seeds you've sown in Jesus will change the landscape of our earth for generations to come. I would like to leave you with a final verse, Matthew 11, 28 to 30. These are also red letter verses. Then Jesus said, come to me, all you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart. You will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. I know denying yourself seems like a daunting task, but I want to encourage you that you will find rest and rejuvenation in Christ, that his burden is light. Trust in his teachings for your life so that we too can become humble and gentle at heart. I want to take a minute and speak specifically to our youth and young people today. Where are you at, CLY? Over here? Got a few over here? Yeah, Diaz. All right. Shouldn't have looked around. Lost my spot. <laughs> you have many years of possibility in front of you. You can choose to be, you could choose to trust yourself or you can choose to deny yourself and follow Jesus. The world will tell you that you're missing out. And I know because I've been there and I can say from experience, you're not missing anything. But as I was a teenager too once, I know this message might be forgotten. But I also want, to, want you to know that even if you wander like a good shepherd, Jesus is always there for you. Youth, I want you to know I love you and Jesus loves you. He sees you are weary and some of you carry heavy burdens. I invite you to, take the, to lay those burdens down, take up Christ's yoke, and find the rest you've been looking for. My name is Jazz. Um, for those that don't know me, I also serve in a City Life youth team, which I'm very happy to be a part of. Um, and I think, is my timer start? Yeah, it did. All right, so we're good to go. All right, so today we are talking about being true, fake news, being true to yourself. And when God says deny yourself, so being true to yourself as defined by culture is thinking and acting in ways that align with your own values, your own feelings rather than other people. Being confident in your own identity, true to your heart, and pursuing your desires to find fulfillment and happiness. That sounds amazing, right? 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 Okay, maybe not. But let me share what being true to myself kind of looks like in my own life when I do. So, for those that don't know, I'm kind of an emotional person, but more stable than some of you. Uh, <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But... <laughs> One of the things I've noticed about myself is that my feelings and desires can change by the season. Um, summer and spring, I'm the happiest, most excited person you'll ever meet. I love hanging out with people. I love playing sports outside, going for food, and yeah, just hanging out with friends. I am like the most happy person you'll ever meet. I'm a people person. Then fall hits. This is when things kind of change. My feelings change. I get a bit more lazy. I was like, I kind of want to more chill. And I get a bit more romantic in the, in the fall. I watch Pride and Prejudice over again. <laughs> yeah. And then I, uh, and then I watch, um, then I read Hosea. You know, the story of Hosea over again. 
And then this is the season where I get discontent. And this is the season where I'm like, Lord, please bless me with something. My life feels boring right now, like a girlfriend or something. And then he's like, and then he's like, nah, I'll give you another youth to disciple. I was like, all right, that's good too. Um, but anyways, and then winter hits, specifically February, and everything just dies. There's no grass, no sun, and it's all darkness and snow, and my vitamin D is low, and I get sad, depressed, hopeless, discontent, and unmotivated. Winter is where I want to be left alone. Now, imagine someone comes along, depending on what season, and says, Jazz, this is who you are. Be unapologetically you. Be true to yourself. Well then, who I am would be defined as, depending on the season, happy, excited, romantic, desperate, depressed, or hopeless boy. <laughs> this is who I would be. But that's the thing with being true to yourself, right? Like, how can you be true to something that constantly changes? How can you be true to something when your feelings are subject to change? And I want to ask this, that question. Is The answer is we can't. You can't be true to something that's always subject to change. Are you betraying your yesterday you for today's you? It just doesn't make sense. Culture says be true to yourself not to give you some really good advice, but rather to sound good because they're trying to satisfy this innate feeling of wanting to be understood. So, out of every cultural advice, God says deny yourself. And that is the true advice that we need to listen to. That and the Snickers commercial. <laughs> you guys know what I mean? You're not you and you're hungry? You should listen to that one too. But just like Snickers, God says deny yourselves. We are more than our feelings and desires. My identity is more than how I feel, what I desire, even my sexuality, my social status. I am more than that. I am a child of God. A son, a believer, a follower, and an ambassador of the kingdom of God. This is who I am. My identity and purpose does not rely on who I make myself to be, but relies on who God has already made me to be. To deny myself and to take up the greater identity that God has set before me. In Jeremiah 1.5, it says, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as prophet to the nation. This is the difference between the culture and God. Culture says be true to yourself to appeal to an innate desire of every person to be understood. God says deny yourself, for I already understand who you are and have a greater identity and purpose for you. But here's the thing. The sad truth is, is that we live in a broken world. And God is here offering his love, his identity, his purpose for you. And yet we're so lost. There are people living out those identity that is dictated by the, how they feel, what they desire materialistically or sexually, job title or even relationship status. And if you're sitting in this room right now, lost, confused, ashamed, doubting who you are because you've tried it, you've tried looking and being true to yourself, but you have found nothing but more confusion and loneliness. Well, let me encourage you today. In 2 Corinthians 6, 18, it says, And I will be your father, and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. God is calling you to deny yourself and to take on the renewed identity that does not change on a whim. God is a constant, the unconditional love that we can rely on, that we can look to, whose identity does not change based on feelings or desires, but has declared that you are my son or you are my daughter. He is calling you to take ownership of who Jesus is in you instead. He has called you his sons and daughters. He has called you overcomers, a masterpiece, and an ambassador of the kingdom of heaven. This is your true self. To deny yourself and take ownership of who he is in you instead. Take ownership of the character of God, the desires of who God is. Take ownership of his joy, his peace, his mercies, his patience, his grace, his love, and his authority. Because when he sent Jesus here on earth, He has given you an authority to live about, above your heart and feelings. He has made you a new creation, not this washed up version of yourself looking inside, trying to understand yourself, but something that is above. He has created a whole new, new, a whole new you because he knows that when you know who you are in Christ Jesus, you will no longer fall for who you're not. And through Jesus... God has given us the authority to live out who he is to this world, or we're meant to reflect the qualities of God and not the qualities of us. Of us. 
And for the teens, we're all COI leaders, and I just want to encourage you today. As you're influenced by TikTok or Snapchat or Instagram, I want to encourage you today. Dig deeper in the Bible. Lean more on God, especially in that time where you're easily influenced and you're growing up. But God has called you for something greater. So there's the Jeopardy mark, and I'm calling it there. Thanks, guys. All right, last but certainly not least, I hope. Um, my name's Mandy, and again, I serve with the CLY team as well, and Voltage. Um, so I always like to start with a get, little uh, get-to-know-you game. So I'm going to give you three fun facts about myself here. So one, I'm an ice cream store manager, and yes, that's as fun as it sounds. Uh, two, I love sunflowers. They make me happy. I love them. Just give me joy. Three, I have multiple personalities. Yeah, see, that last one seems to have got your attention. Um, this is a mental, di this is not a mental diagnosis, this is a spiritual one. So um, I'll explain this as we go. So culture says to be true to yourself, whereas Jesus says to deny yourself, or for today's message, deny yourselves. And yes, I mean plural. So something I've noticed lacking in today's world is consistency. Something so pushed and prevalent in culture is that consist consistency is so unfairly labeled as boring. You know, it's boring to have a consistent job. No one wants that nine to five anymore. Hashtag influencers, can I hear it? <laughs> it's boring to have a consistent sleep schedule. What are you, 90? No, I'm 21 with a severe lack of sleep. So, <laughs> it's boring to have a weekly routine. You have to live life on the fly to truly enjoy it. It's boring to be a consistent person. You're not interesting if you're reliable. We've heard that. Why is being consistent so bad? Honestly, it seems like you lead a healthier life if you're consistent, right? So as followers of Christ, we should aim for consistency in everything. Consistency in prayer, community, righteous living, all of it. We're to be strong and steadfast in our faith. But what about the consistency when it comes to your own life, your own personality? Are you consistent in your walk of God? In every aspect, with everyone in your life, are you consistent? Today I'm speaking to all those who are consistent in the fact that they change themselves to base, they change themselves to suit the people around them on a daily basis. I'm speaking to those who are different faces for different places. I'm speaking to those who change their character and potentially their values based on their current audience. I'm speaking to those who have always separated their personality based solely on who they are with and what image they had to put out. Honestly, I'm speaking to myself here. I don't know if you can tell. Um, have you ever changed who you are to please those around you? Have you ever hid part of yourself to save face? Have you ever been dishonest with who you truly are? Please tell me I'm not alone or else this is going to be an awkward long rest of my message. <laughs> Thank you. I'm sure we've all been guilty of inconsistency at one time or another, right? A chameleon personality constantly blending. This can be in any situation, acting in a different way, saying something you would never usually say, pretending to be someone you're not. By denying consistency in how we act or in who we are, we are denying to God. If we're not consistent, we are denying God. In Luke 16, it says, if you are faithful in the little things, you will be faithful in the large ones. But if you are dishonest in the little things, you won't be honest with the greater responsibilities. Are you honest with your walk of faith? Are you faithful with the little things as well as the big things? Can everyone around you in each aspect of your life see the love and light of Jesus Christ? Are we abiding by culture when it says to live your truth or just be you? Or are we striving to be consistent in our everyday? We've asked the deep and you know, uncomfortable questions now. We can move on. What are you talking about? Mandy, what are you talking about? It's hard enough denying our one supposed self. How do we go about denying multiple? You can deny your multiple selves in many different ways. First and most importantly, by getting rid of them. <laughs> To find yourself in the midst of the clutter of your many personas, you have to find your identity in Christ first. I've had a church Mandy, a work Mandy, a friend Mandy, a family Mandy, too many Mandys to keep track of, a different skin and personality bending to, the, to fit those around me. I was living in a constant state of inauthenticity as I had this inner pressure to keep up these personas. And truth be told, it was exhausting, and I started to slip. And you know what? I couldn't catch myself because my true authentic self, it didn't exist. I was not rooted in anything. It was only through the love and the consistency of Jesus and guidance from a professional that I've blended those, all of those different Mandys into one. It's noticeable. 
People from all, every aspect of my life have commented. I didn't know that you could be silly. It's so cool that you're open about your faith. You seem lighter. You seem different. I am different because of him. Society's being true to yourself is garbage. I can't just be myself because I'm nothing without Jesus. Now, this doesn't make me a sudden poster child for consistency. Let's just clear that up. Lord knows I'm still growing and asking for God's wisdoms daily, but I've started with the work, and it's through consistency that I'll continue denying my multiple selves. In Voltage, we always talk about our Voltage values. Be with Jesus, become like Jesus, and carry on the mission of Jesus to his world. So, to do this practically, to deny ourselves, be with Jesus. To be with Jesus is to sacrifice all of yourself for him, to him. To be consistent in your prayer, your faith, your church, your family. If any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way, take up your cross, and follow me. And that's in Mark 8, 34. So give up your own way, deny your many selves, and choose Jesus constantly. Let that be your consistency. So, become like Jesus. Jesus did not alter himself. He stood by his faith, even when facing death. People mocked him, questioned him, despised him, yet he remained the same. He remained consistent. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Be someone who is consistent, someone others can count on, someone who holds the torch for God and become like him. And lastly, carry on the mission of Jesus to his world. Chameleons don't attract because they blend. How can you reflect Jesus and his word if you're constantly faded in the background? Prove by the way that you live that you have repented of your sins and turned to God. We are called to be different. A lighthouse for the stormy seas, not another ship to be wrecked. Be different. So I challenge you, blend the personalities, but don't blend into the background. Remain steadfast and consistent in your faith and deny yourself on a daily basis. Pick up his cross and carry it with pride. You don't need 30 versions of yourself to fit everyone else. You need the version that God loves. You are a child of God, and you only need one of you. So be that one that God loves. Thank you. And you know, that's one very consistent theme that uh, I'm sure you were all really excited to hear. And it's deny yourself and take up your cross and follow Jesus. And that is, that is the key to life in the kingdom. And it's, you know, it, he said, if you try and save your life, you'll actually end up losing your life. And I, I mean, we could have testimony Sunday and family after family and individual after individual. We could tell the stories of how we tried to fix our own life, make our own life just be true to ourselves and how it ended up in a shipwreck. And then how the, the times that we, have, we chose to deny ourselves instead and how later that turns into life. I love the, what you said, Brett, about how you have that two classes of memory. And one, it's like they weren't necessarily easy memories, but there's still life in those memories. And that, that really is the invitation that Jesus gives us, is to deny ourselves and follow him. And I'm just going to lead us in a prayer. Maybe you're here, and maybe you've just been doing Jesus on your own terms. You know, Jesus is like, you know, your lucky charm. Maybe he's your rabbit's foot. You just keep it, you know, better keep a Bible somewhere in the house just in case. That's not what Jesus said is following him. Following him means, Lord, I'll follow you the way you ask me to follow you. And maybe you're here and you're, you're thinking, you know, I've, I've tried this, but I haven't, I haven't trusted him that his ways actually will produce life. I want to challenge you. Trust him and follow him and see if what he said doesn't work, if that doesn't lead to places of life. Father, I thank you that you've called us not just to be believers in you, but you've called us to be followers of you. You've called us to set aside our own preferences. You've called us to set aside our own desires because our desires, just like Mandy said, our desires change. 
Father, we don't want to just try and be true to something in us that isn't even true itself. We want to follow you. We want to follow the way of life. We're just going to pray a prayer together, and it's a prayer saying yes to following Jesus. And if you want to be included in that prayer, you can just join us as we pray, Jesus, I say yes to you, and I want to follow you. I want to follow your ways. I want to follow where you want to lead me. And I want to be transformed by your spirit. Would you forgive me of my sin and help me live in the reality of that forgiveness? I say yes to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Awesome, guys. We hope today's message encouraged you. If you want to take your next step in saying yes to Jesus, you can always contact us at cty.lc slash next step or fill out the next step section on the City Life app. It's an honor to play a small part in what God is doing in your life. We look forward to connecting with you soon.